Hey everybody, welcome to the vlog and my hair that's annoying me today. It is July 20th, it's a Wednesday, 2022, 5.54 p.m. And it's National Hot Dog Day, so guess what? The hot dog-a-thon ain't over. Um, so, you know, related to the Jamboree, well, I'll get to that. First, let me let you know, this is my vlog, I do all kinds of crazy shit here, so if you don't like some of it, or you wanna skip around, or jump back and forth, or just remember your place, I do do time code breaks on the uh, timeline there, or if you open the description below, uh, you'll see a bunch of blue numbers, and it'll tell you what everything is, so you can jump right to what you wanna see, or, you know, click around or whatever, rewatch things easily. So, uh, we are gonna talk about some things, I'm gonna tell you about Resident Evil Netflix series later. We definitely have some wedding updates, some real deal updates. Uh, we're gonna make something really freaking awesome here in a minute. It's actually technically making two things. One you've kind of seen before, but we're gonna do it differently. Uh, we're gonna make a cocktail, um, and then I don't know what else, but we're gonna do it, we're gonna have fun doing it, and it's late and I'm getting hungry, so, and I gotta do trailers and a whole bunch of stuff today, because Wednesday is my work day. But uh, let's get to it, shall we? Uh, let's cook. <laughs> hey everybody, I just choked on a bunch of saliva, but now we're gonna do some cooking, so. It is National Hot Dog Day, that's just a coincidence as I film this, uh, but we're gonna make this anyways. Um, I had inspiration, <clears throat> of course, at the Joe Bob's Jamboree for a whole bunch of themed hot dogs based on Joe Bob Briggs, The Last Drive-In, that whole crew, uh, and I got so many ideas coming, and we'll be making a bunch of them here, some very experimental, some just for fun, and today we're here for fun because I came up with a silly name. If you saw that vlog, you know that was John Brennan and his band, John Brennan and the Big Feet, which I absolutely love. And in honor of him today, we're gonna to make what I am lovingly calling the John Brennan and the Big Meat. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, we're gonna make a crazy heart attack of a chili dog, but it's gonna be amazing. So first things first, before we get to what we're gonna do special with the dog, um, we are gonna go ahead and make that hot dog chili. The, the, the recipe I've been using has been pretty great. It's gotten better each time. This time we're gonna make a double batch um, because I'm gonna play with it a little bit. I'm basically doing the same thing, maybe slightly more on the spices or whatever, but we're gonna mix a pound of ground beef and a pound of pork chorizo. We gotta get some of that hogzilla pork on there. Um, so, <laughs> you know, cause I love my, some, me some chorizo and uh, it's gonna be very, very tasty. So let's go on and bring it down when we start putting together. Uh, I do like to do my mise en place and go ahead and pre mix all my wet and dry ingredients because they all go in in one step. So it's so much easier than trying to, you know, measure everything or have a whole bunch of things. So I can get it all in one cup, basically. And of course, now I'm gonna open up my, um, my, uh, ba -da 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 -da. where is it, my recipe, so I can see what I'm actually working with. And, all right, so, uh, the water, okay, so tomato sauce. So I have to double all of this, so normally it's five ounces. Today we're gonna go with 10 ounces. And we've got the uh, Centro, you know, it's just whatever, tomato sauce here. Can you see it? I should have shown you before. That's what I'm working with. And this is a 15 ounce can, so obviously we're gonna use about two thirds of it. So we're just gonna get that up to the 10 ounce mark on this measuring cup, which is like such an awesome, is it really 15 ounces in there? I guess so, okay. Such an awesome thing to purchase, by the way. This can go up to like four cups or even higher, but it measures up to four cups of ingredients, so. Very cool. Half a cup of tomato ketchup. So obviously we want a cup here. So we got the old Heinz. And yes, like I said, I mean, if you're having, oh, that sucks. I'm gonna assume that seal was good. <laughs> I should also check the expiration on this. I feel like I've had it a bit, but it is ketchup and it should last quite a while. Let's see, just to be sure. Oh yeah, it's good till April of next year. So we give that a little shake a shake a shake -a. And now we want to get to the 18 ounce mark in the cup here. I probably shouldn't use the squirt part, but oh jeez, yeah, that's what am I doing? Oh, what? There's more. Apparently, there's more. Oh jeez, okay. Uh, let's see, toothpick will do the trick. What has Mary done with? Oh, there it is, toothpick holder. <laughs> I got some more paper stuck in there where that thing did its weirdness. So honestly, the easiest way to do this, we'll probably need those toothpicks later as well for something. And anyways, even though I've uh, done this, we're gonna leave it with the lid off anywho. It's gonna go a little faster. Okay, plop. And you kinda wanna shake the cup down every now and then just to make sure. Like that's the, we're getting there, oops. It kinda flattens it out so you get the more accurate measurement. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna grab a paper towel. 
that up a little bit. We need to refill our refrigerator ketchup squirt bottle anyway, so get that out. All right, what's the next ingredient to go in? Uh, yellow mustard, a tablespoon. I, so two tablespoons, and I'm gonna go a little heavy because I do like my yellow mustard. So your tablespoon. Squirty, squirty. That's a good one. Oh, jeez. Gotta remember not to splat it around on my newest Joe Bob shirt. Mm hmm. And then, you know what? Just a good old little extra squirt, because not, not all of it comes out of the measuring cup, and, uh, I think we're gonna use that again. So yeah, so we need a tablespoon of Worcestershire. So we actually want two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I got an extra bottle here because we've about killed this one. And again, I like to go a little heavier on the Worcestershire. I like that dark kind of earthiness it brings. And we'll give it a little extra splash there. That feels good. That's a dry ingredient, dry in the case. So the rest of these are dry ingredients, except for the water that's actually going in here. So. So I'm just trying to clean as I go a bit because we actually have, I already have handled the dishes. We'll put all this away in a minute when stuff is doing stuff. I'd like to give that a nice little stir, so. Kind of already have it all mixed up, then we'll mix our uh, dry ingredients. This just makes it incorporate through the whole thing we're doing a little easier and quicker when we get in the pan <coughs> as well. <coughs> we're using the three and a half quart stainless steel pan today, if that helps you out. Do, 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 do. And we'll leave that spoon in there so I can kind of stuff out of the way. We'll clean up once we get the pan heating. So now let's put together the uh, dry ingredients. I think I got a little tiny splatter of mustard in there. All right, so two teaspoons, ah, come on now. Two teaspoons of chili powder, so we want at least four. And I have started using, because I like this, it makes it a little too hot for Mary, but um, I like this Chipotle uh, chili uh, powder. It has that little bit more spice, a little bit more smoky depth it brings to it. So what did I say I needed? Teaspoons, yeah, teaspoons, sorry. I'll bring my teaspoon. Eventually I'll find it. Where are you? You're a half. I don't want no stinking half teaspoon. There's a teaspoon, is that gonna fit in the thing? Yeah, sure, all right. We can get that, oh, that's a heaping teaspoon, so that's fine, we'll just do a couple of heaping teaspoons. Okay, and then we're gonna need half teaspoons. Um, oh, actually, I need to see. Ah. When I screenshotted this, okay, so everything else from here is a half. All right, cool. All right. Half teaspoon after all. I do need you after all. I spoke too soon, didn't I? Use this to kind of wipe some stuff down here. Let's uh, do the sugar first. So, half teaspoon of sugar. Oh, Christ, I should have just used a full teaspoon. Dumb. One. Kind of should, you know, it's a little late now because I just put that in there, but I almost wonder if I should try this with brown sugar. Brown sugar! Maybe next time. <clears throat> All right, so we got the sugar in. I'm gonna wipe that out just to make sure to keep some contamination low. Now, you can use minced onion, but because I missed that the first time, I just went with onion powder. It works great, saves a little work, so I'm just gonna go with that. So again, half teaspoon, which means we want two since we are doubling. Okay, got that. Need a half teaspoon of salt, which means a full teaspoon of salt. And also, we're gonna need black pepper, and I can't remember how my count works. One. Too. Like I had figured out 50 grinds of this is something, but I don't remember if it's <laughs> half a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon, so I might need 100 grinds from this. Let's just do it, it's pepper, who cares, I love pepper. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, and 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100 point one, the pepper burn. I don't know, I'm done. Okay, Whew. I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a little mix up too. It's not really necessary, but it does help evenly disperse things a little bit more when we actually pour it in. All right. So that is essentially the hardest part of everything we're doing. <laughs> Flop that over, dump that. All right, now we do have one more measurement to make here in just a second, which is some water. Here is an answer I translated from Echo. JP. Go home. You're drunk. Didn't I didn't ask her for anything. Uh, two thirds a cup of water. Okay, well, this we want separate because this goes in with the meat. This is to break the meat down into smaller pieces and all that jazz. All right, Mary's got her food. She's heading home. She's having dumplings. She knows this is not gonna be her jam. <laughs> All right, let's uh, grab the meat. So, where do I got it? All right, got that, this and this. I'm gonna try and keep these separate so I know what's what. All right, so, there is a little bit of an issue here, but nothing major. So I do have my pound of ground, I, of course Angus, because, I mean, you know, uh, the best reasonably priced beef you can do is Angus. There is definitely better beef, but reasonably priced. Um, so we went with the 90-10, like it said. Now the last time I made it, I just went with the 80-20 because I liked it a little bit fattier. But because we're going to mix in chorizo, which is very fatty, I figured we would go with that. Now these unfortunately come in nine ounce rolls. <laughs> so that means there's 18 ounces, which means we're gonna be two ounces over a pound. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball what two ounces is and we're just gonna get it close. Uh, so first I'm gonna go ahead and prep my meat. Actually, I need to get the burner warming up the pan because it's supposed to go into a warm pan. Medium skillet, medium heat, combine the ground beef and the water. Medium skillet. Come on. Ah, these fucking pilot lights in these things. Woo. Smells like the farts I'm gonna wrap, uh, I'm gonna... Smells like the farts I'll be farting after this hot dog. There we go. All right, so, okay, so now I just wanna actually, let's go ahead and get my favorite spatula out and on standby. And let's open up some of this stuff. I'm gonna dirty a plate. I'll use one of Mary's. It just goes easier if I get this out of the tube ahead of time. And of course, now I'm trying to remember what I do. I'm gonna need that knife anyways, right? Well, here, we'll just use one of these, it's fine. We're just gonna cut through it. And just kinda squeeze the meat out of the plate. Cause as you can see, I've, I've learned from working with this uh, that if I start doing it this way right into the pan, it burns a little quickly. So while well, it's waiting on me to get all the pieces together, so this is my cheat around that. Okay. And I'm kind of wondering if I should just go ahead and D two ounces over with the chorizo. I mean, like, is that really gonna hurt? Because what am I gonna do with two ounces of chorizo? That's like a taco. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Screw it. Let's do that. Let's just do that. This is my recipe now, so. That's how I feel like it. That's what we're gonna do. So 
make sure you don't accidentally leave plastic in there. <laughs> that would be unfortunate, most unfortunate. Crap. And uh, I like this brand, it's pretty good. I've tried a few different brands, store-bought. One of these days we will work on making our own, our own mixture and everything. I have been researching meat grinders. Although I'm finding out if we're just gonna make a thing or two, you know, if we're not making like five pounds of our own ground meat, we're probably better off just doing it in a food processor because it may take a little longer, but it's like infinitely easier to clean. So it's like, all right. Maybe that's the way I'll go with it then. Yeah, all right, there we go. All right, and then next, let's go ahead and clean that off a little bit because I'm gonna reuse that to open up the beef here. Just trying to get everything so it's like ready to roll when we are. And that seems accurate. All right, what did I just do with that? Here, I'll use this one or this one. We need to get that corner clear. There we go. All right, so the pan is heated. And now let me recheck my recipe. So, what do we want to do here? We're going to get the meat and the water in. We're going to break it up. We're going to drain some stuff. And then we're going to let it simmer, basically. Uh, two thirds cup of water. So no oil? Oh, I guess because we have the water. Right, right, right. That makes sense. Okay, let's uh, let's get this ground beef in because that'll that'll kind of help cool the pan a bit. And I want to get in here so I can get under the uh, thingy, the little packet thingy. Let's get that in there. Oh, come on, come on. Would you please? Thank you. Let's get a third cup of water in there real quick. Try to keep that from burning or searing, per se. Let's go and get that other third cup of water in. Okay, and then let's get the chorizo in. And this is where it can get tricky because of all the fat we're gonna get out of the chorizo. I'm not entirely sure how this is gonna work. Hopefully I haven't just, I won't just totally fuck this up. So now we just wanna break up all the meat. We wanna get it, keep working it the whole time we can. Get it down to the smallest pieces we can. We're granular, so we're just gonna use, this is called, by the way, this spatula is called the chopper. Get to the chopper. So we get a little pre-stabby here. Start getting into the chorizo some. The chorizo will come apart a lot easier. But yeah, this whole water method with chorizo, I don't know how that's gonna work. That might be problematic. We'll find out. And we're basically gonna do this so it looks like, you know, the meat is cooked. And of course, we'll mix this up as we go, blend it all together. I have done a beef and chorizo uh, chili from Sam the Cooking Guy, and it's great, but it's made differently than this for sure, so. And obviously, this will get a little easier as we get in here and things kind of shrink down. It's a little tricky up front. Oh, and I was gonna go ahead and allow myself to start drinking some wine because I'm excited for the cocktail we're gonna make tonight and I wanna make it earlier, which means if I'm gonna have the wine I like to have, I wanna go ahead and start drinking it. So we can have a good time. Plus I'm gonna be pretty, I'm gonna need to be drunk for this <laughs> hot dog. This hot dog is gonna be insane. This is all going on one hot dog. I'm just kidding. I am just kidding. But I mean, this is John Brennan and the big meat. We might end up needing to put a little more water in here because that chorizo fat is already kind of, yeah. Oh God. Oh man. <laughs> All right, this already smells fantastic. And you can also kind of mush stuff through. Yeah, sorry for that buzz, but as we all know, there's like heat wave stuff everywhere. And even though it is kind of cool in the house, I'm working over a hot stove. So I got my little handy fan going. <laughs> gotta keep myself from getting too hot. I gotta do my trailers later and gotta be all cute and sexy for it, you know? 
I am definitely glad I went to a bigger pan. This is, seems to be the perfect size for what we're doing here. And again, we just want to keep chopping through. This is why it's really good to work with like, uh, I guess you could do this in cast iron, but it's really good to work with stainless steel. I don't have to worry about chipping things. And there's like so much tomato sauce and stuff in here, it doesn't really leave too much of a fawn to clean later. Of course, what is interesting here is I seem to be losing the ground beef a little bit. I'm seeing pockets of it here and there, but it is all getting very incorporated. <laughs> And then once we get this to the simmer stage, because this is actually based on a slow cooker recipe, but they say, you know, just simmer it down for another 20, 30 minutes. However, when I made it before, it only ever took 10 minutes to simmer, but that was just beef and only a pound, so I don't know how this will go. We'll see. Get in there. Let's give everything another little smushy smush. Saw some ground beef strands to definitely muck up. And yeah, it's, it's starting to look a little better. I mean, obviously, you know, if you're kind of grossed out by this stuff, it's gonna look gross, but I don't know. I, I've worked with all this enough now, I'm no longer finding any of it gross because I know what it's gonna turn into. <laughs> Actually, this chorizo version of this chili might've been really good. It might not quite be as hearty as the other versions. It might actually be a little more Soupy-ish. Yeah, we're just gonna keep, keep chopping, keep working it. Find some big lumps, we're gonna break them up. I got a really good feeling about this, actually. I'm starting to feel a lot better about it. Not entirely sure how I'm gonna drain some of the fat and oil out, or the fat and, well, it's only fat, I guess, there's no oil. Fat and water, there we go. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I definitely got some big old ground beef chunks I'd like to work through over here. Not huge, but it's getting there. Oh, also, I should tell you, and I should show you, I almost filmed it, but I really just wanted to do it for myself. I took my first crack at making homemade peanut butter yesterday, and wow. A, it's insanely easy. B, it's way better for you, because you control what's in there. So maybe not better for you, but, you know, you have more control to make it what you want it. <laughs> so I didn't use any oil or anything. Really, just peanut, I, I for my first time, I used, uh, Planters, dry roasted, lightly salted peanuts, and then I added some salt at one point, and added some honey, and I tried to make a crunchy version, and it came out okay, but I know how to make it more crunchy next time, because I was trying to make it for my dad, who likes crunchy. I'm more of a creamy guy. Yeah, I am. Oh yeah, I got a really good feeling about this. This is gonna be, this is, oh yeah, we are on to something here. And I feel like I've changed this recipe enough now, I'm about to be able to call this my own. I do feel like I wanted to add, I don't know, something in here, like maybe a garlic powder. I'm thinking about maybe cumin. Of course, I'm always thinking about cumin, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. Uh, <laughs> I am a child, but I have so much fun. All right, I think we got everything pretty well broken up. <clears throat> we just want to cook it up some. Yeah, this one might actually take a while to simmer down because there's gonna be so much more liquid even after I drain. But look at that, it has a much nicer, thinner consistency than we've been getting now. Granted, that is because of all that chorizo. Chorizo, chorizo. You say chorizo, I say hey Lizzo. Baby, how you feeling? <laughs> like I'm gonna swell. See, because eating the food makes me, and it's a Lizzo joke. The best comedy is explained comedy, so yeah. 
Now I will say this is making it a little bit trickier for me to make sure that the meat is cooked. Because at least when it's you know beef, you can and especially when you break it up, you can kind of see from the color. This I think we actually might need to simmer a little on its own before we put in the wet ingredients. Which will also change up how this works. Yeah, but look at that meaty, meaty niceness. That is such a good texture for a hot dog chili right there. Yeah. Now, did you see yesterday's Ninja Turtle? Uh, you really want to watch at least the end. There, just like this, there are time codes. Even if you don't care about the video game play of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge, yesterday's episode, episode three, our Let's Play, our third Let's Play of that game, uh, near the end, <clears throat> we make a chili dog pizza which utilizes this very chili recipe, well not this very chili, the, the version we were making before, pre-chorizo version. And my God, is it incredible. It really was. It turned out as one of the best things I've made in a long time. And I make a lot of good stuff. All right, yeah, at this point, I'm kind of feeling like, I'm gonna let that simmer and thicken a little, basically. And then we'll try to drain it off. So this is definitely a change in what we, uh, what the plan was. It's not even really a simmer. That is definitely more of a somewhere between a simmer, simmer and a boil. In the meantime, I guess I can kind of be putting some stuff away in the background. We're gonna have to bring out some heavy machinery here soon too, and hope that the oil is still good. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to do a different approach. But basically, we are going to be deep frying our hot dog today. Aaron, don't eat the tape. Buddy, I love you, but don't eat the tape. Our boy Aaron down here, he likes to, we have like packing tape holding this cat door thing open because none of the cats really like to walk through it <laughs> unless it's held up for them. He really likes to get it eaten, that tape. So yeah, we're gonna let some of this work off Actually, you know what I might do too, just to, uh, so it doesn't get too smoky in here. Use the little ventilation fan thing here. <sighs> and I mean, I don't mind leaving some of the grease and stuff in there, but you know, you definitely want to get some of it off. I'm trying to scrape down the edges a little. So we'll let that go for a few minutes and see what we got. Uh, in the meantime, I guess I could be kind of cleaning some things up back here. Because yeah, I, uh, I hate cleaning, but for some reason, I do not mind cleaning kitchen stuff as I go. It's almost as zen as the uh, cooking itself sometimes. You got an angle on there? You get to watch me do some of that? Cool. Yeah, I'm having one of those days I uh, got busy earlier. Because normally, well, that's TMI. No, um, <laughs> normally on a Wednesday, I'll clean that later. Normally on a Wednesday, I would like shoot a bunch of trailers, then do the whole vlog, all the segments, and I'd be up all night editing and scheduling and dealing with my Patreon video and all that. Today I've already dealt with the Patreon video while I was having coffee, and I picked out my trailers, which takes a while, and as much of it as I could have done, I've already done all the text work for it, and uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. All right, so I'm gonna just check on this. Yeah, okay, I think we can actually do a pretty good job draining out some juices now. So, let's see, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. Let me just make sure on my uh, thing here. All right, constantly break up the beef while it's cooking as fine as you want. Drain off any remaining water or grease. And then we're gonna mix all the ingredients in and simmer on a medium heat. Okay, stirring occasion. So this might be gross for some of you too, but again, this is something Mary turned me on to, so we don't send a bunch of grease down the drain. We just have a grease jar. We just kind of fill this up, and, and it doesn't matter if it's hot. Of course, it matters when you touch it after, but... All right, and this is kind of the tricky part. You're gonna be able to see me work here. I don't wanna to make too big a mess. We don't wanna lose any of the 
actual beef. We are losing a little bit of pork in there, but you know. Oop, yep, missing the jar. Okay, I think that's, well, no, I think I'd like to get a little more. Ah, shit, need to set it down for a second. <laughs> Re-angle. Because we're gonna add a bunch, oh, hold on, that was a, I don't have a good handle on it. All right, we're gonna call that good enough. Get that back over the heat. Let me uh, try to just wipe that down carefully. We'll deal with the jar. Ah. Whew. I think I lost some arm hairs just holding it over there. All right, so now let's get our wet ingredients in. We're definitely gonna have to simmer this a little longer than usual just to get a lot of that extra grease out. Because we don't want it too runny, you know. A little bit, I like a little bit of loose, you know, I don't want it just to be like a meat patty. But, uh, all right, let's get that through and then we'll get the, just get it a little bit going around here. Let's get the spices in. Uh-oh, there's a bug. Jack's going crazy for a bug, everybody. Cool. And we just want to mix all that through. Oh, fuck, that smells good. Maybe a little cinnamon in here, make it a little Cincinnati style. Oh God, it smells fucking incredible now. Oh, the way that chili powder hit and a little bit of sugar. Yeah, I definitely want to try brown sugar next time though. Mmm. All right, so we just want to get this nice and mixed through. Hey, Mary. Hey, are you getting mail today? Uh, yes. Oh man. No, I was waiting till about six. Oh, she's at six thirty. I thought you would be home about six. Sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah, I made a stuff that. I, I did give them treats though. Make that contact that I need to make. Gotcha. All right, so there we go. I think we have this about mixed together, and that's definitely much superior than we want. So we are going to definitely simmer this down, probably a lot longer than usual. But I mean, it looks and smells so good. I wonder if the uh, cornstarch would help too. Well, that was just thickening it, yeah, but I would rather just try to simmer it down if I can. And I assume it's okay if there's probably a little bit of meat particles in the grease jar now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine because it's a certain way. Yeah. All right. All right, so now we just let it simmer. Uh, oh, it wants to plop. Crap. Whew, that's a problem. See if we can get it past the plopping stage here. Take a step back. Echo, <clears throat> set timer for 20 minutes. Oh no. Are you flirting? You can also No, uh, it's just doing more of a flop as it's trying to get to the simmer. So it's gonna make, it's gonna be a little messier than usual. That's what I'm oh knowing. But once it kind of gets to more of a simmer mode, I think it'll be okay. But of course, every time I stir it, which we're gonna need to every now and then, it's gonna be a little bit of a problem. Okay, let me finish cleaning this jar off. Get another paper towel. Hi, <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Actually, I think I'm supposed to leave that open. Let it cool. These are done. Let's get these rinsed out. Okay, good. It's turning into a little bit more of a simmer. Well, I'm trying to keep my hands dry, but whatever. So we cook as we clean as we go. Actually, yeah, I'm going downstairs. I'm going on. No reason for breakfast, man. I'm going to get on to that. 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 All right, Daddy's got to figure out if this oil is prior is still good. Uh, sorry, cat talk. Turns to mommy and daddy when they, we're talking to the cats. All right, so yeah, we got a simmer going now. That's good, it's not plopping as much. Let that work, I get that out in the fridge. All right. Okay. So, 
Yeah, because I can't make it reach from there. We have to do it over there. All right, so I guess what we want to do now is start prepping our hot dogs. So I bought something special for this. Bear with me. Dig some stuff out. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. <laughs> so we're gonna do deep fried bacon wrapped hot dogs. Yeah. But because we are talking about John Brennan, and this is John Brennan in the big meat, we're going with the colossal Franks. Quarter pound freaking hot dogs. Look at these damn things, man. We'll make a couple, just in case we screw it up. I've never done this before. So, you know, there is that. <laughs> but I'm excited to try this. So, I need a plate for prep. Do, 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 do. And I gotta figure out my plan of attack here. So I guess I just need to go ahead and open the bacon. Well, let me do a couple of towels. I guess we'll do it over here, so we can all see what I'm doing. Uh, we are gonna use some rubber gloves since we're working with raw bacon in our hands here. Come on, why do I always pull out 10,000 gloves, man? A couple of gloves. Let's get some uh, few toothpicks on standby. Somewhere. Now it's the start. Sit right there. All right, let me uh, open this bacon. Let me open the hot dogs too, real quick. Just gonna cut like a quarter out. And then attempt to let those drain some. Bring out the hot excess hot dog juice. Do we have enough of a hole to work with here? I don't think we do. Dang it. Enough of a hole to drain some juice, but not get the dogs out. There we go. Now we're getting one started, okay. And a little more this way. All right, I can actually yeah, groove. Okay, I'm gonna get a dog out as we need them. Let me open this bacon, we'll give this a stir, and we'll wrap a couple of dogs in bacon. So we have the private selection, center cut, double smoked. This is kind of our typical go-to bacon that we make here to eat. And lately we have had the best luck. Oh, I'm cutting from the wrong angle, that's fine. We'll work with it. Let's get this open, maybe. Well, we'll open that. Let me give us a stir. It's doing a good job simmering. Let's scrape the bottom. Oh, oh no. Nope, that's bad. Shit. Shit, that is making an awful fucking mess. But yeah, I needed to get to the bottom because some of it's burning down there a little bit. Not bad burning, but you know. Oh, this is just a messy beast. <laughs> That's all there is to it. No way around it. This is gonna require an entire clean down here. <laughs> Jesus, man. I need you to stop splattering so I can get to the damn bacon. Come on, get to simmer mode. Yeah, I took my heat down to medium low in hopes that that helps a little bit. Yeah, this is gonna require a full clean down because whenever I stir that, it becomes a nightmare. So I'll think of ways around that in the future. Maybe just use more of a stock pot style thing so at least it can't splatter up as much. 
Can we actually make sure the door closes while that outside oh, doesn't? Yeah, I'm sorry. Because it is gnarly outside. That was my bad. Okay. Getting this bacon, which I cut from the wrong angle, but whatever, it worked. I got in here. Ah, oh, crap. Would you squish me out a hot dog? I have a hole open here. Or actually, you may even want to squish me out two, because I'm going to make two just to be safe. Onto the. <laughs> Please tell me that's on camera. That is on camera. Nice. Oh, oh, oh. I drained what I could, but. <laughs> oh, I got it. There you go. I got you. Little, little cleaner. All right, now, normally, regular dogs take one piece of bacon. I'd like to get anywhere from two to four slices on each of these. Because <laughs> this is, I will remind you once again, John Brennan and the big meat. Actually, let's swap it over. Let's go from this side. Uh, this is a bit fattier than I had hoped for, but. Uh, come on, bacon. Uh, there we go. Told, told to do oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, watch that vlog laugh from last time and blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. And we'll see if I probably will need the toothpicks, but we'll toothpick it after we get this going. Oh, yeah, we're going to at least be able to get three slices on each of these because this is nice, thick bacon. Just going to kind of try and do my damn just to pat it down tight as well. And what did I do with those toothpicks? Let's go ahead and toothpick this. All right. I'm well, good. We're going to be able to do pretty good here. I think we're going to be able to get like a nice three slices on each one. And I want to wrap it tight. Didn't quite cover the edge on that one. I think with this other one will get better, but. Okay. All right, so there's one beautiful bacon wrap dog. We're gonna wanna throw these back in the fridge and let them chill too. That's why we're going ahead and wrapping here. Rolling, 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 rolling. hot dogs and bacon for national rolling, freaking rolling, rolling, yeah. hot dog day. Hells yeah. Spot cover with a little extra bacon. See about toothpick in that. And yeah, I haven't used my deep fryer in, I don't know, a while. So I'm not entirely sure how long that oil will last, but I mean, I got other oil. If I need to change the oil, I just need to know if I need to change the oil. <laughs> All right, so let's get you nice and tight. All the way aroundish. Mm, this one's being a bit of a trouble, trouble puppy. And there we have it. A couple of nice fryable dogs. And then, I don't know, I guess I need to fry up that bacon or something. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it. We're going to keep it on standby in case this fails and I need to make more first, though. Alright, and in standby, we need to put it in the microwave so the cats can't get to it. <laughs> Alright, ah, no, 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 slide over that way, thank you. Alright, we'll put the dogs away eventually. I'm going to slide these back in the microwave, I mean the uh, refrigerator, so they can chill. They'll be really ready for us, and we're ready for them. All right, now we have to do this part again. And yeah, we're definitely, oh yeah, crap. I'm getting a little too much issue on the bottom here. So we're giving it a nice scrape along the bottoms, getting up all that pond. There is still a lot of liquid I would like to simmer out of this. So yeah, definitely not the 10 minutes like uh, the basic beef version. <laughs> And I'm trying to go easy here so I don't, you know, splatter or slop it out 
Obviously it is splattering, there's no way around that, but hmm, trying not to get burnt on my arms here either. But I mean, you can see it is getting, it is thickening up, you know? Come on, get off the thing. I'll tell you what, let's do the old scrape it. Scrape a scraper. Because there's a lot of good flavor in there, we want to get back in there. <laughs> there we go. Push it down in there. Let it get wet. All right, we'll keep that on standby. Yeah, it's coming along, it's coming along. All right, so those are ready for frying, so I probably need to set up the fryer. We are gonna add a couple extra little toppings to this too, so we'll get to that. Not too much work there. Uh, hmm. So what I really need is I need this space open. So I have to clean some stuff off the counters because we still haven't put all our stuff in the jammer right away. So just bear with me a moment and watch that beautiful chili sizzle. Almost cleared it all off. Couple more things. All right. I'm gonna make some room to work here. Let's get at this puppy. Of course, I'll show you the fryer here when we're ready to show you. Ain't yet. So we got a pretty dope little uh, fryer. Okay, all right. Cool. Self-draining uh, fryer. Okay, all right, what next, Eric? What next? Let me grab a couple of ingredients that we're going to be working with. Last one. Oh, I just had an idea. Uh, sorry. Again, like I said, I am developing a whole bunch of different hot dogs right now. Or hot dog type substances. And I just had a really cool idea I don't want to share with you yet because I don't want somebody to steal my idea. <laughs> All right, so we are gonna dice up some uh, pickled jalapeno. I was gonna go with fresh, but I think this thing is gonna be so meaty that we want something acidic to really bring it out. Of course, we're gonna, instead of mustard, we're gonna do nacho cheese. And if you're gonna do any nacho cheese, you're gonna use Rico's nacho cheese. I have a can of this, but I don't need to open a whole can, so we won't even use this whole thing. And I have some slightly going bad red onion, but just enough that, because I don't wanna dice a whole dang onion, but we're gonna get a little onion on there. Again, the counterbalance. And then Mary, before you disappear, I'm gonna eat my dinner. This is a quick question. This is more of a quick question, not a help me. Um, I guess it doesn't help me, but uh, I just want your opinion on if this. If we think this oil is gonna be okay. Let's see how oh, you're there. asking the wrong person. I just pull it out. I haven't used this in so Can long. There we go. Okay. I don't know. Looks fine. Mm, it smells all right. Yeah, it like it okay. Alright, well let me uh what do I wanna do? How do I wanna do this? That's still got some simmer time left, but it's getting there. It's getting thick. Actually, let me give another scrape on the bottom here. Just since it needs it. Yeah, this is getting there very close. It might need the full 30, but uh But yeah, you can see that's getting into, oh yeah, that's like a, oh man. That's dope, I love that, all right. That is the texture I've been trying to get in this chili. I mean this, yeah, in this hot dog chili, so I'm rather excited about that texture. I think I might actually try the console downstairs. Oh, eating on the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take squirt gun with me. Yeah, in case the cats want at your food. All right, that's groovy. Um, let me show you this, I'm gonna pan over. Pan up. In case you haven't seen it in a while, this is my favorite deep fryer. It's the uh, T-Fall Ultimate Easy Clean, I don't know. Anyways, it has its own oil tray, so when you're done and the oil cools, you hit a button 
It drains all the oil down into here. It stores the oil, and you can keep reusing the oil so many times. Um, so you might enjoy how this part works as I pour this. This is peanut oil, which I might not normally use for this, but because it's there, it ain't gonna hurt it. Just gonna give us an extra little dose of flavor. So this will get us between the max and the minimum fill line, even after some is a uh, of all, you know, there's like a whole filter down there, so it filters out all the gunk and everything, just puts the oil down back in here, so it's a little bit of a pricey, more pricier uh, deep fryer, but you know, back when I was in that huge, uh, let's make all the uh, ch homemade chicken wing phase, which I don't really do as much anymore. We use the hell out of this thing, but I haven't used it in quite a while. Luckily, I still know what I'm doing, he says. Ah. Trying to avoid getting my hands too oily. That's for later, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just slides in there, switch it over to fry. Now I have to set it up over here because with deep fryers, because of the electrical issues, they don't let you really use cables that are incredibly long. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay, it's off. So let's turn it on, and let's turn it all the way to 375, because it needs it. So the light's on, the light's off, we're good to go. I'll lay down some stuff while it heats. All right, we bring the camera back over here. Oops, wrong direction. We'll dice up some onion and some of this. We'll get the cheese microwaving. We're getting there, everybody. I'm so anxious to try that. Mm. Let's just send a picture of my dad. He's excited to get some of this today. <laughs> Almost. He's probably gonna want us to bring it to him. It's like, oh man, come on, man. Also, uh, Hmm. I feel like I could use some help here, but it's fine. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to use a small one of these puppies. And like I said, some of this onion has definitely gone bad. But some of the stuff, I mean, it'll be a lot of it. Some of the stuff on the bottom is fine. Yeah, that's fine. And since this one's already kind of uh, sliced up a bit, Yeah, sure. Good enough. <clears throat> Let me get my knife. Okay. Echo, dismiss timer. That 20 minutes was just about to go off. It's about four seconds away, just to give you an FYI, <laughs> or an assessment of what we're doing here. Come on, onion, get on my face here. This is not my normal cutting board for this, but I was just trying to not make too big of a mess. Gonna have enough dishes as it is today. You know what, screw it, let's just... And I feel like getting this kind of fine diced a little bit. Although that's not really working out so much. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Let's see if we can get that into a little container of sorts. Just to make life a little easier. That chili is so freaking close. Give it another little scrape on the bottom. Ooh, almost over pushed there, didn't I? <laughs> oh yeah, getting some some browning over here for sure. Try to get work some of that liquid back down in there to help get it up and give us all that delicious flavor. 
Yeah, I think this is just pretty much ready, honestly. I'd like it to maybe just a tiny bit thin, or you know, a tiny bit more. No, I don't know, I think that's right. Look at that. Yeah. Yep, I'm gonna call that there. We're gonna take off the heat. And we're gonna push it off there just so it doesn't keep burning. See what we can do about getting this onion in here. We just gotta dice up some uh, jalapenos, get the cheese a little warm, and then it's gonna all be all about frying them with dogs, which should theoretically take five or six minutes. Normal hot dog, they say anywhere from two to five, wrapped in one piece of bacon. These are obviously larger. All right, let's uh, go ahead and work our jalapenos. Mm. Good old pickle jalapenos. You will see these make a return later. That's probably good. And because I just need to hold this, we're just gonna kind of slowly start a rough chop here. And then we'll go back in and kind of more fine dice a little bit. Just because I just don't have my, uh, you know, I didn't put down a proper cutting board to <laughs> Really do it the way you should. Hey, baby bit. How you doing, baby girl? Smelling daddy's awesome food? Yeah, that way it's gonna be a little more like an actual pickle relish. And yeah, if I had realized I was gonna do pickled jalapenos, I might have considered pickling my own because I never have yet. But that's fine. This feels right, because this is kind of what you would get at the drive-in, like on a drive-in dog, or what I call a drive-in dog. Rico's nacho cheese, pickled jalapenos. This stuff is so good. You don't really need to heat it up, but uh, I'm gonna, I love these little 100, 110 calorie dip cups too. It's a great way for portion control, because that tends to be my dietary problem at times. <laughs> All right, has this heated? No, it looks like that is still heating up. But we got that, so let's get this in a little cup here. Make life a little easier. Honestly, I thought I needed more, but now that I'm getting it in the cup, I'm like, no, I think I got plenty. Okay. Right. Mm, you know what? I need to. All right. I know what I need to do. Hold on. I just don't know if I have the strength to do it. Sorry. <laughs> I can't stop that joke. Just kind of give my knife a wipe off, but I'm trying to do it in a way I can still reuse this if I need to. Where it's put away for good. That looks amazing. Uh, we, oh, fudge, I got that bacon here. Okay, hang on. Break on, I need you to come out for a minute. You know what she's doing? All right, let's give that an 11 second blast. I think that oil is getting close. Let's go ahead and get some tools out then. Let's get these short tongs and the long tongs. Uh, let's get. Paper towel for the tongs. Let's get a double paper towel for the lid. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and set the basket down in the oil so it can be warming up. Yeah. Just wait on that puppy, basically. Now, we're going to give this cheese a little stir. I usually go about three rounds of 10 seconds ish. And that tends to get it to a nice Temp. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Yeah, screw it. Another 11 seconds won't hurt. Um, in the meantime, because I am very curious, 
to take a taste of this little this hot dog chili. It definitely has more of the hot dog chili texture I've been looking for. Oh, I should put my face, well. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. That is fucking awesome. Honestly, it probably could have simmered down a little more. Mm. Oh man, it's spicy too. Yeah, that is dope. All right, one more. This time we will go for 10. Nah, that's for 11 seconds. Three 11 second blasts on the cheese. Oh, and the oil, the fryer is ready. So as soon as I get that cheese out, we'll reorient the camera and everything. And we'll get this party started. That little stir. Groovy, put this bacon back out of the way for now. Groovy. Uh, we got our condiments, we got all that. All right, so let me, uh, let me see what I can do here with the camera. Bear with me while I uh, move this around. Oh, this is gonna be a long video. I didn't realize this. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, this will be easy. I'm just gonna make some hot dog chili and fry some hot dogs and all right, uh, let's go, let's go this way. Hello. I know, you're gonna get weird angles right now. Let's see what we can do here. All right, I'm gonna bear with the camera shake. Actually, can I, yeah, that's probably pretty good. Yeah, that gives you a reasonable angle on things. It also keeps everything far enough away from splatter zone, probably. But let's play it safe and let's put down a paper towel over the battery thing. All right. And the basket is down in the oil. That's pretty shallow for the oil though. Am I gonna get that in there right? I don't know. We're about to find out. All right. All right, here's where it gets crazy because I have never done this before. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna be overly cautious. I'm sure this is unnecessary. But again, having never done this, I'm gonna grab a grill glove and do it from a distance. <laughs> All right. I'm just leaving the basket down. We're gonna gently set these dogs in there and hope this uh, works. Hmm, yeah, they're gonna need to get turned. All right, Echo, set timer for six minutes. Six minutes, seven minutes. All right. Fingers crossed. In the meantime, let me grab my funds. Fun. I don't know. They're gonna be. Yeah. Okay. So I did buy pretzel buns that we could use, but honestly. See if we can blow some of that smoke away from the ceiling. Uh, honestly, I think the pretzel buns are gonna overtake it. So I've got some brioche buns, they're still pretty good shape. I should steam these, but uh, you know what? I'm, I'm ready to just get this stuff together. So we are gonna build this on a brioche. It's a little small, but I like that idea. I want the meat overflowing out of the bun. It should be about, this is John Brennan and the big meat. It should be about the meat more than anything else. So that's the plan here. So I'm just kind of getting over here to prep somewhere I can actually build this dog right quick. And what do I want to build it on? I want to put it on something pretty. That's really going to show up. So we want a white plate then, don't we? Okay. Uh, I guess we we'll use one of these. Boom, basic diner style white plate. We'll, we'll move the camera over for building when the time is right, because those are going to have to drain off some. 
And we will check these in a couple of minutes here. I mean, we have a little window, but we'll see how it goes. Oh man. Whew. All right, let's see if it pops anything back. <laughs> Yeah, it tastes amazing. Dogs in fryer. Oh, and I was gonna go make sure and see if the BAC is still on. It has it like smartly, air quotes, turned off. Because it's getting warm in here. I am correct. Excuse me. I was keeping it 72. I have allowed it to get up to 75 in here. No wonder it's getting a little thick in the air. <laughs> Okay. <sighs> Man, I kind of wish I had that fan for me, but actually the smoke's not too bad now. Let me borrow this back. <laughs> I mean, it's looking like it's it's working out pretty good. It's been about, what, three minutes? Should I take a look? Give him a little stir? It should be, eh, no, we'll use this. All right. Okay, that's turned out nicely, but I would like to turn these over if I can. Oh, that bacon is shrinking like a motherfucker. Yeah, a couple more minutes, they ought to be there, because that bacon is looking good. I think the trick here is just make sure the bacon doesn't burn. So I think it's, I think it maybe just takes five or six minutes. But we're about to find out. Of course, we're gonna let those drain off. I should probably set up a draining thing too. Yeah, let me grab a rack. Because over the oil is just going to stay oily. So what I will do is, probably done with these temporarily. Let me set them down. That way I can borrow this plate, save a plate. I'm just going to set this plate kind of under the cooling rack. Ish. Hmm, that doesn't quite work, does it? Well, that that's good enough. <laughs> okay, I don't think we're gonna have splatter over the battery, but just being safe. All right. Whew. Definitely gotten warm in here. <laughs> and I don't know if I mentioned this or if I thought to mention it, so I'll mention it again just to be safe. Uh, I'm not going to do any kind of mustard on this because honestly, I don't think mustard and nacho cheese, it's okay together, but they're really kind of competing flavors, I think. So let me take a little look-see at that. That bacon is crisp. These are ready. Mm, oh, fuck. Oh, okay, that's splattery. Mm. I caught a fleck or two in the face. Oh. Whew. Oh, my God. All right. Yeah, future reference, I probably should pack the bacon a little tighter so it can be completely wrapped, but man, that looks awesome. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm getting a picture of that. Cause damn. Damn, damn, damn. Whew. Oh, hell yeah. Oh my, my, oh hell yeah. Time to put on that party dress. Is that how that song goes? Okay, so you see the dogs? We'll get those toothpicks out when we uh, transfer them over. Oh, that's right, I was gonna get them into a cooling rack. Let me go ahead and do that. And we'll leave the oil uh, running for now. Just so, uh, echo, cancel timer. Just in case I fucked up and need to do this again, but I honestly think I got that goddamn perfect. And I don't need to, I made two in case I, you know, screwed up. So now bear with me while I re <laughs> reconfigure the camera one more time. Sorry for all the shake and bump and rustle. Okay, we got that. Grab this battery pack. 
And moving back over to the normal position here. And I think we can probably turn this fan off. And let me grab my phone so I can see my camera angle. Which is actually quite nice. All right. Maybe pan down a little. There we go. All right, well, yeah. Everything's looking good. I think it is time to build the world's first John Brennan and the big meat. Oh, I'm excited. All right. Good thing we got a bunch of buns in case we screw this up. Woo, yeah. All right, so we wanna get that in. Since we're not doing mustard or whatever, I guess we are ready for a hot dog. So we bring one of these over. Which one do I want? I think you look more beautiful. Ooh. All right, see if I can get these toothpicks out easily or not. Ah, I took a little bacon with it. That's not cool. I mean, I guess I get to eat that bacon, but still. Come on now. There it goes, there it goes. Got it? All right. Dog goes in the bun. Perfect. Perfect. So that's going to be the photo angle so we can catch that there's bacon on there. All right, so we want to get some cheese under the chili. And again, we want to make sure we drizzle it because, again, I'm also kind of keeping an eye towards food styling here. So I'm trying to make sure a certain part of this looks just right. And you know, this is not meant to be a healthy snack at all, so let's go hard, baby. Yes, you'll definitely see that, that nacho cheese is there. All right, let's get some uh, dog chili on here. Go a little easy on the front part so I can make sure I'm stylizing it the way I want it. And since this is mine to eat, I might get in here with my fingers just a tad. But this one's mine. I wouldn't do this if I was making it for company. Ooh, careful. Don't want to make it look nasty. I'm trying to keep the... We may have to clean the plate a little bit. A little bit more. God, that chili is really tasty. All right, and then we gonna hit it with some onion. Some pickled jalapeno. It just occurred to me I better make sure I secure that other hot dog in case some cats get curious. Actually, this is the first time I've used this uh, deep fryer since we've had Aaron or Jack, so let's hope they don't you know, learn an awful lesson before I can secure things. <laughs> All right, oh my God. Let me just clean up my hands and the plate, get some footage and some photos and holy hell. Not entirely sure how I'm gonna pick this up, but holy hell, man. This looks phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So let me see what kind of photos I can get from here. Uh, I kind of want one. That's not bad, but I kind of want one where I don't have the junk in the background. Oh, screw you, pickle jalapeno. You stay where you belong. Oh, it's almost a perfect shot, except for that one fleck of onion. Actually, make this even cooler. There we go. Alright, 
I got good shots. Okay. Okay, I need to eat it. Let me get footage. All right, let me uh, do what I gotta do and see if Mary's available. Holy bejesus though, look at this. Look at this madness of beautiful deliciousness. This has gotta be great, right? This has gotta be amazing. That is an insane amount of food. And then just give you a little close of the actual chili. Mm. And let's show you a bacon wrapped dog, deep fried style. Mm. I don't think I've ever had a deep fried hot dog, other than like corn dogs. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Look at this sucker. I'm gonna show your reaction. Look at that. So, I'm gonna be taking you to the hospital for dislocating your jaw? Yeah, and the heart attack. That looks amazing. <laughs> that looks so flippin' good. It's gonna be very, very messy though. <laughs> There's no way around that. Oh, all right. All right, everybody, wish me luck. Okay, not as much foolish. Oh my God. Mmm. Mmm. Holy shit, that is good. Wanna look at the camera? Mmm. Mm. <laughs> there was the spillage. Oh man. Oh, get in there, get a, get a closer with that. Mmm. That hot dog, the fried bacon and hot dog is so goddamn good. And the spice from the chili, mmm, and a little cheese, mmm. Mmm. That crispy bacon, mmm, mmm. Oh my God. Yeah. How spicy is it? Well, it's got a little, oh, Jesus. It's got a little heat. Um, tell you what, oh, um, oh crap. I just got that. I'm, I, I'm going to pass because Actually, I am stuffed. I think, you're, I think you'll be okay. It's really not bad. I like it. I tried to decline taking the taste. He, he's like, no, no, no. He well, declines taking tastes all the time. Yeah, but I'm picky. Um, <laughs> did you want to try it? I think I can hold. No, I'm I actually. I would. Okay, fine. Don't. It's fine. Don't. But I think it's amazing. Oh, shit. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Have you. Ever have you my face? Oh, we need. Oh, fuck. We need the. Oh, we didn't get the thumbnail shot. Okay, is, that's a that, that is a face. All right. Hopefully, that's a good thumbnail face. Yeah. I need a bib for this. Hmm. 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 Have, have you ever had a bacon wrapped deep fried hot dog? Um, not that I'm aware of. Dude, you might not want to know how good they are. Mmm. Um, all right. If you allow me mm. to maybe knife and fork a little bit. Okay, well, yeah, give me a chance to. Here, how about this? I'm gonna clean up. Okay. Let her take a bite. Mary's gonna knife and fork this a bit. She's gonna go from that end. Pure jalapenos. Mm. Hopefully there is some bacon on that. Mm, maybe. Just little bit. Okay. Either. Make sure you get to get a fork of all the stuff. I don't know if I said it, but it's a brioche bun. Okay. reaction for her on something like this. Well, there's no chorizo on back in. Ooh. Oh, and the chipotle. You didn't say anything about chipotle. Well, the chili powder, just like last time. But I mean, what do you think? Is the John Brennan and the big meat a success? If you don't mind the spice, I'd say so. But Ooh. it's it's more it's it's more meat than I can handle. As it should be. 15 inches base to tip, baby. Woo! So I should have opened this before, but I'm gonna give this to my dad. This is my peanut butter. I can't really give you a good look. I'm talking to the camera. Uh, if he doesn't like it, I'll take it back. I'm just gonna make me some more, but 
I just mentioned, I thought before I send the peanut butter off, I was gonna show them the peanut butter. So Mary's gonna be nice enough to run that over to dad so I don't melt and I go get working. Uh, he got half the chili, I got the other half. The chili itself is dope. But here's the important part, what you wanna know. Dishes, how I load my dishwasher. I was thinking about getting more stuff in there, but that oil is gonna take forever to cool and I'm just gonna have to run a diff different load. Plus no cooking tomorrow because we're going to the movies, so might as well. And I don't really have any more, don't really have any more, uh, no, no hot dog. Uh, any more room up here. Unfortunately, he's leaving that hot dog with us. Uh. <laughs> but there you go, that's dishes. I gotta get to work. All right, let's, uh, before I go to work, oh, my hair is annoying today. Let's do a wedding update, but first, let's take a cute cat break. Hi. <laughs> Hi. She's trying to get to my hand. <laughs> or, or the phone. She likes to numb on the phone. Well, usually she goes to the far end where the camera is. Ah. So I'm on the wrong side. I'm going to get on the other side. Here we <laughs> go. That's a good girl. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, wedding update. Oh, oh, you're waiting for me to talk. No, I was actually trying to pretend like I was drinking the whole thing, but I didn't actually want to chug the whole thing. That was the joke. Okay. Comedy is best when explained. So the joke was that we're very stressed from the wedding stuff. All right, well, that's a good sign. The camera died, right? And I'd already told like a minute of the story. But anyway, so let's just move on. Uh, we got all those guest lists out. Our save the date thing, literally two or two months from the actual date, we wrote the letter. Yeah, I know. We wrote the letter. Uh, I sent it out to pretty much everybody on my side of the list. She's got everybody, but three or four people on her side of the list sent it out to. A lot of people have gotten back to us, a lot of positives. Uh, well, no, no, there's no negatives, I guess. It's just a bummer. There's a handful of people, particularly on my side, that aren't going to make it, and it's kind of sad. Um, but, I mean, I get it, and I got cool ideas. But, uh, yeah, the, the last drive-in folks, like Justin and John Brennan and them, they're not going to be able to make it because, like, when we were at the Jamboree, John was really excited about it, but he was like, oh, crap, I think we start filming season five that weekend. He couldn't confirm. But, yeah, he confirmed, Justin confirmed that, yeah, they are filming season five, and Justin was like, he, he's really bummed. Like, he really wanted to come. But I was like, well, we'll get together. We'll make it work. So that is sad. None of the last drive-in folks are going to be able to make it. Uh, maybe Amy, but I don't know. She, she's, her services are probably better utilized up there. We'll see. Um, and then, unfortunately, John Russo, longtime family friend and uh, mentor to friend and all that, he was very excited too, but because I waited so late, he is already booked for a con that weekend, but he did tell me to send him an invitation in case anything changes, so who knows. Uh, the shock for me is, uh, I don't know, should I tell everybody? Maybe I shouldn't tell the tales out of tune, but could, could still be iffy. I have no idea who you're even talking One about. One person that we both love from YouTube. Um, oh. Uh, it actually got really excited and basically saying if there's any way they can do it, they will do it. And I was like, well, that would be awesome. So we'll see how that goes. But I don't want to throw that out there, you know, just in case. But it's somebody, it's it's a very cool lady <coughs> that was there during the Star Wars stuff. There, That's the only hint. Mm -hmm. um, so basically we're giving them two weeks from July 17th to get back to us, and then we're gonna send out the actual invitations. Uh, so July then- July 17th? Two weeks from July okay, 17th, so. we're sending out the, we gave them two weeks, and we're gonna send the invitations. We might still be inviting some people. If you were expecting an invite, you might still get one. I don't know, especially since I got a bunch of no's on my side, although it is more money. I'm like, you know every nine, 10 people that don't come to the wedding, that's a new guitar for Eric. <laughs> or oh. gutters okay. for Mary. Oh. <laughs> Mom's calling again. Oh, um. Uh, she, she, I can call her back. Yeah, let me, let me, I'd like to get the segment out. <laughs> um, so let's see, I think that's, is that all my wedding? Okay. Well, I guess, uh, let me tell you the mic. Uh, we have an invitation cover. Mike designed to save the date, but we sent out to save the date. So we got him changed it to the uh, actual invitation. It's, it's like really it's nice. Covered the invitation. Right, so I got to figure out an invitation service to use in the next week and get that set up. Uh, it does sound like Jeremy got back to me. It does sound like uh, they have planned a menu, but somehow it didn't get to me. So I'm going to get in touch with them and see what that is because people need to know what their choices are so they can tell us. Mm -hmm. We're still going to figure out a seating chart once we get a bunch of RSVPs too. Well, we don't necessarily have to have a seating chart. We really should. We decided we would because we decided it would be a real pain in the ass for everybody if we don't. Um, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to get my, oh, yeah, 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 and then, uh, so that was Mike, and yes, I did get back to him, he showed me that silver, I told him, blah, blah, okay. blah, so I'll get, make okay. sure I confirmed all that with him. Uh, my groom party, we're going to get together a couple of times before now, and then uh, the bridal party's really taking care of it, we got a color scheme, we got a theme, old school Hollywood, red carpet, Oscar style, Mike's 3D printing Oscar things. My mom things. found this <laughs> Yeah, Mary's still looking for a dress, we just had a long talk with her mom, found her dress, she got plans for her dad's stuff, I should check with my dad what he's planning, he probably just wear a suit, I don't care. 
Um, I think that's you every. Have a Probably. He's a, he's a devilishly handsome man. That's where I get it from. Uh, but let's see, what do you want to add to it, Mary? What do, what do we got wedding update-wise uh, on your end? I went to uh, one of the craft shops to look at. We decided we were going to do fake flowers rather than real flowers. So, you know, we know exactly what we're getting. There's no last-minute surprises. Right. Um, and probably paying a fraction of the cost of the real flowers for a wedding because... Um, so yeah, still looking for a dress, uh, got some possibilities, might break down and go to the bridal shop just to look. It wouldn't hurt to at least look, I suppose. I know, I know, I was just like, oh. Oh, we're still looking for a photographer, but we've got some leads, even though it's a little late. Yeah, you, since you have all the information. You I know, I, I figured that one's on mine, yeah, on me. Uh... I found some really cute toasting glasses. <laughs> yeah, that's something anyways, right? That's something. I'm starting to yeah. rethink our, uh, vac our our honeymoon and like move Huatulco again until Aero Mexico is easy enough to book on. And then fuck it, let's just go to Vegas or something. I don't know. I don't think that's ever going to be easier to book on. Oh no, it will be easier. But when hopefully one day flight staff shortages and all that shit uh, stop canceling that. flights. That's, you know, I mean, it's getting easier, but. Uh, yeah, travel insurance is your friend. Yeah, but anyways, so uh, <laughs> we can talk more about that later. Uh, let's see. Uh, so... Thinking either, uh, so with the flower stands, we're thinking black and white with a pop of color. Yeah. Uh, so it's either going to be purple or red. I was thinking like reds and golds, because again, that's what I think of when I think of Oscars, is black, mm -hmm. whites, gold, silvers, and reds, because red carpet, gold Oscars. So you, want, you prefer the reds, okay. I think so. I mean, I mean, I will go purple, because I know purple's your favorite color, but in keeping with the theme of what we're doing, yeah. I think the red makes more sense. Okay. But. All right. But again, I, I'm willing to let you make that decision if you'd like. No, I mean, that's fine. Because like I said, I was going back and forth between those two. Okay. I mean, just have purple on my boots. I don't know. <laughs> that actually, yeah. That makes sense. Ooh. Hell yeah. Red, blue, uh, and purple. It's like 3D and blended. No, I'm just, <laughs> you do whatever you want in your bouquet, obviously. Uh, anything else? Um, yeah, the... the the, the bridal chat has been mostly going, what about this dress? What about this dress? What about <laughs> I'm so glad all our friends are into making this work more than we are. I think they recognized, because I really thought I would be able to plan this whole thing, but we're just kind of bopping along, still doing all the stuff we normally do in our lives, and everybody else is like, hey, we have questions. You need to make these decisions. Oh, I, we're like, I, I, I was laughing when you thought you were going to be doing all the things. Well, the thing is, I didn't anticipate that I would still be doing other things, because if all I had to focus on was the wedding, I, it'd be not that big a deal, but... Yeah, see, that's almost never the case for anybody. Yeah, I know. And with like it's jamboree like, and musical inspirations. Uh, you remember and... how I met your father? Uh, yeah, I think you it's were... the same time you met me when we were at the Doctor Who murder mystery. Not literally. Oh, you mean the, the TV show? How I met. Yeah, I remember the, you know, the, 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 the lady trying to plan her wedding, and actually two weddings on top of, you know, doing her job and flying across country to see her fiance. Yeah. That's Except for the two weddings part. That's a little more normal and maybe flying across country. Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah, you, you basically, you have to figure out how to do all your usual adulting on top of playing for the wedding. Unless you have a wedding coordinator to do all of it for you, which we do not. We should have, but we're getting there. We'll make something work. Um, of course, again, if this had been left up to me, we'd be getting married in the backyard of the pot left. Too. Yeah. And of course, like <laughs> as we've said before, I'm the little girl that dreamed of the big wedding. And as it's gotten closer, I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> I'm going to enjoy the hell out of it, but I'm like, ugh, there's just more crap on my plate. Not the getting married, but all <laughs> the planning. And... Surprised. <laughs> I love you. But I'm making hot dogs for <laughs> cool reasons. Eventually, one of these days will listen to me. <laughs> I occasionally listen to you. At least now, I, at least when I start doubting you, I'm like, wait, what am I doing, Mary? I, I, you're going to be right. Why am I? At least I'm doing that a lot more often. So. <laughs> Uh, that's probably good for the wedding update today. Okay. Because we still got a lot to do tonight. Yes, we do. All right, bye. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll be making a cocktail. I don't know if Mary's gonna be awake to see it because it's been one of those one more thing, one more thing, and I mean both ways. Like she one more things, then I one more thing, then she one more thing. But um, and now the latest one more thing before you're finally gonna sit down and watch something is uh, there's a possum in the garage. It's been there before apparently, but she's trying to chase it out now before she closes the garage door. It's oppressively hot out there, but let's do this while I have a few minutes. Resident Evil, the Netflix series, eight episodes, roughly an hour per episode, some 50 minutes. Uh, okay, history with Resident Evil real quick. 
Um, I, when the first game came out, my roommate uh, at the time uh, loved it. He played it on PS1. I loved watching him play it. I wasn't, I sucked at a lot of games. I only really played like whatever the WWF game at the time was. Uh, that's a whole other story. Oh, Jack, Jack. But um, loved watching him play it. Loved watching him play a little bit too. I think I got to watch him play some of three. I know he was collecting the toys, but I never really played them myself. And then uh, I guess later <clears throat> when four came out, I probably tried that on the Wii. I didn't really like the motion controls game. It wasn't super into gaming. Five came out and it had been out a little while. Uh, that's when I first got back into gaming on an Xbox 360 and I played five and I loved it. Which then led to me, you know, playing a bunch of the other games, the remakes, the remasters, Zero. I guess I had Zero on the GameCube. Maybe by GameCube I was playing some stuff. It's all fuzzy in that era. Probably played the remake on GameCube, but I'm sure I never finished them. I wasn't that interested at the time. <clears throat> I mean, I like the story, but interested in gaming, I mean. So 5 was the first time I really finished a Resident Evil game. And then I went back and I played a bunch of them now. And I played almost all of them. Some of them I'm saving. Some of them are like the smaller, iffy games. Um... But there are games I return to over and over and over and try to 100% and beat on all the difficulties. And uh, Mar Mario and Resident Evil are my all-time two favorite game franchises. Uh, that said, jumping forward, movies. Really loved the start of the Mila Jovovich universe. I really wish George Romero could have made his. Uh, but, you know, they started off pretty good. And then we get to, like, that third one, which is pretty good. Even though it takes it in places it's hard to backtrack from. I enjoy them. There's parts I enjoy through all of them, but some of the later ones are definitely, and the last one, definitely very difficult to get through because they're just not really good movies, at least in my opinion. So I think, nope, she's still fighting it. Okay. Oh, uh, she could use a hand. So that's my setup. I'll come back with my actual review. <clears throat> I almost forgot to finish my review. Let's do that. Then I'll tell you what happened. Then we'll make a drink and then I'll kind of start wrapping this up. All right, so my actual review, now that I set up all the Resident Evil stuff, I had a love-hate. I had a, I was uh, cringy at first. I was into it, then I was out of it, then I was into it. And by the middle, you know what? I freaking really enjoyed it. I'd be happy to see another season. Is it a perfect Resident Evil thing? No, because they still haven't done that. Is it maybe the best Resident Evil thing they've done? debatable as a Resident Evil thing, far less so as just something called Resident Evil that has the possibly most interesting story uh, and filmmaking. Um, for me, at least, uh, yeah. Um, I did love this. I do love the tie-ins. There are some things I really kind of liked about this, but at the same time, um, uh, when you really break it down and think about it, it makes absolutely no sense. Like, I love there's this one puzzle solving moment that definitely feels like the game's references the game's hard. Like you get this clue that leads you to do this thing that opens up this passageway, that whole like the whole sequence. <coughs> but thinking back on it, as I, as somebody brought up, the context of why somebody set all that to begin with is absolutely ridiculous because how long it would take you to figure it out doesn't make sense within the context of why you would need to. Um, you know, and, and you know what, even though the guy is Wesker, uh, actually, he's a great actor. I loved him. And honestly, I was a little like, uh, how does this really work in with everything? But honestly, they get to a point where they actually do explain that and give you some kind of cool fan service -y stuff that maybe isn't what everybody wants, but at the same time is pretty dope. And I mean, I kind of enjoyed it. And I really liked a lot of the characters. The main girl, not the actor that plays her old or young, but I can't think of her name right now. Like, God damn it. She's so fucking annoying. She's like very real teenager. But then the sad thing is she makes some insanely, insanely selfishly stupid, ridiculous choices uh, by the end of the series too. Now, granted, I mean, you could say it's a horror property. People make dumb decisions. Yeah, but no, this is like way out of character for a scientist character. But I mean, you could, you could argue it isn't, but then it's like, uh. But I mean, overall, I did really enjoy it. I like the twists and the turns. There is a big, Let's keep this vague. There's a very big creature thing that is set up beautifully and looks amazing. And then honestly, it's kind of fizzled out. Like, well, that was pointless and dumb. And then the CG at times, at times in the show, I think the CG and everything is fantastic. At times, like the moments I'm remembering right now feels like, it feels like, uh, which one am I thinking of? Mecha Shark versus Crocosaurus from The Asylum. <laughs> And that's not a dig at the asylum. Their effects have gotten better and better over time, but they still haven't hit, you know, multi-million dollar, hundred million dollar level. And this 
like, ooh, that's not as good looking as it should be. <laughs> but made more so ridiculous, like I could get over that, but it's made ridiculous like by how like, wow, you really just kind of shoehorned that in and it didn't really be necessary, it didn't achieve. <laughs> it's just kind of messed up. So yeah, it's all over the place, it's not great, it's not terrible, but it's actually really good. And if you go into it thinking of it as not a Resident Evil thing and its own thing, it's far more enjoyable. Although I do think, even though it's definitely at times feels like it's an IP, they just are like a, a written series or a concept that they slap the Resident Evil branding and stuff on, they do try to fan service tie some stuff in in some ways that are kind of interesting. So at least as like a fan of certain, you know, the games and such, it's like, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's why that, oh, okay, so this is when it's set. All that kind of stuff. And I do like the jumping back and forth of the time narratives back then, back now. So you can have action while the other timeline is being drama. And then when that timeline gets action, the other timeline can be drama. Uh, some of the production design is great. The creature design is great. I just like, not really a spoiler, but like the liquors are hardly in. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> they could have gone a lot harder with outside of the zombie element than they did. And even the zombie element, I'm a little like, is this exactly Resident Evil zombies? I'm, doesn't quite feel that way. At times it does, at times it doesn't. Um, music is fantastic. I will give it that. The music is 100,000% fantastic and what I want a Resident Evil show or movie's music to sound like. And again, I think performances were really solid all around too. Uh, even when they have to get into some of the more fantastical, ridic ridiculous stuff, still very solidly performed and felt just grounded enough for the most part when you kind of start getting some of the maniacal villain stuff, maybe it doesn't quite land as well, but other than that, pretty good. And there are some twists and turns and some maybe things you don't see, but you know, it's on Netflix. And I, I would definitely say like, check out an episode two and if you don't like it, skip it. But that's not true. Like, I feel like if you're going in as a Resident Evil fan, it doesn't get to the level of good enough to be on as a Resident Evil fan until like midway through the season, literally like episode, end of episode four. As a fan of these kind of things, if you're pretty forgiving, you're definitely gonna really love it. If you're super critical, you're gonna have all kinds of issues here and there, and you're probably not gonna have a good time. So, I don't know, that's the best I can do. I'm trying to, trying to see it through as many sets of eyes as I can and give you the best recommendation or not. Because again, I'm a film, I'm a video store kid. Um, the thing I always loved, I was always really beloved as a video store clerk in all the independent video stores because most people come and be like, hey, what's a good movie? What should I watch? And people would just be like telling them their opinions. And they came to me. My first question after that is always, what have you seen lately that you really love? Or what kind of thing are you in the mood for? I really try to get a sense of the person's taste and how they experience film before I give recommendations. So maybe that's how I need to start doing my reviews is looking at it through all those different lenses. Because <laughs> I'm easy. I can find joy in almost everything, you know. All right, let's make a drink though because I finished that bottle of wine and I'm ready to try this thing and I need to shut up soon so Mary can go to bed. We got a couple more segments and I gotta do all this editing. <sighs> okay, so I put this on a stand because Mary had a good day. We're gonna try what we've talked about for a while. Pickled jalapeno tea. Obviously I love my martinis, olive brine, delicious. Uh, vermouth for me, delicious. We've done the dill pickle teeny, delicious. I've made it multiple times since the video. Um, and I've kind of perfected a good balance of how much of what for me. And we tried the bread and butter, butter pickle teeny. And, but again, I feel like maybe you skip the vermouth. I gotta play with that one. But today, I think it's gonna be more in line with olives and dill pickles because it's a more vinegary thing. We're gonna use a bunch of juice from this. Maybe a jalapeno or two. I haven't decided. We are definitely gonna do the half ounce of vermouth. And of course, we have Tito's vodka. Pretty simple. We're gonna put it in the shaker. I'm gonna show you this the best I can. If you see my other videos, if you have it, maybe so you know what I'm doing. Because Mary's like brushing her teeth and stuff, so I can't ask you. I've already, it, today went longer for both of us than we intended. But basically, I'm gonna measure out in this thing, pour it in a shaker, we'll get some ice, I got a chilled martini glass. So the pickle tea, we're gonna go with the same pickle teeny recipe. I've had a bottle of wine now. <laughs> Two ounces of vodka, we're using Tito's. Great vodka, especially for the price. A uh, half ounce of, uh, of dry um, vermouth. Not for everybody. I like vermouth, I'm weird. 
And then we're gonna do at least two ounces, maybe a heavy two ounces of the jalapeno, the pickled jalapeno juice from the Mount Olive. Again, different, jalap different pickled jalapenos are going to give you a different brine. So, you know, it probably works the same with whatever if you're in the same ballpark. I'm not saying this works, we're about to find out. So we definitely want to get a good solid, because again, I'm making a double. Am I making a double? Hold up. I think that through. It's four and a half ounces of liquid. I have a big thing, do I? I have a big thing, maybe. Well, theirs was normally double. It was a three and a three. Let's go double. Screw it. That's a little heavy, two ounce pour. I'm gonna make this a little light, two ounce pour. I may regret this, especially if it's not tasty. And now that I'm doing this, I'm realizing, mm, honestly, I should've just stuck with, oh fuck, it's a little heavy. Should've just stuck with a single-ish. Oh my God, four ounces of vodka. That's a lot. Actually, that's not that bad. That's not that bad. Let's get us in about an ounce of vermouth. Ooh. That's, ooh, splashed out. It smells kind of olivey, briny. Which means now we're actually gonna want four ounces of this delectable jalapeno uh, pickled liquid. Now it's a soup spoon. Be easier to work with, theoretically. Oh, this is gonna, this is gonna take a minute. Okay, I, I have to set this down. Yeah, that way you can get bigger spoonfuls out if I can kind of half turn the jar over. And I am trying to avoid seeds and stuff as best I can right here, just because, you know, it's a drink. We don't want to necessarily put chunky textures in there. They might filter out, they might not. We've got about an ounce so far. I think I'm definitely gonna regret making this a double. Or maybe I won't, I have so much editing to do, it'll just sit there and be fine. Sorry, I'm getting little jalapeno chunks, I don't want that. There went some anyway. <laughs> That. That's a good two ounces of jalapeno juice. So we gotta do that again. Just bear with me, we're almost there. All right, ah, come on. Ah, got a whole freaking jalapeno that time. All right, a seed or two is fine. Because again, it gets in there, whatever. If it filters out, perfect. I know the top of my head is the best view of me. You know, actually, there's probably at least one or two people out there in the world uh, that would agree. <laughs> I don't necessarily agree, but sure. Actually, you know what, no. Well, no, the ladies would have a slightly, they would have a little more forehead in their view. Oh, one of the kitties just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I assume Jack was chirpy purring. Daddy will shut up soon, so you know it's bedtime. Mama has gone to bed, Jack Jack. Daddy's out here making sex jokes and a really bad idea of a cocktail. <laughs> Almost, one or two more spoons. <laughs> there are definitely ways you could do this better. I'm just being a bit of a stickler. I just thought maybe I should actually test and see if I could drink that juice. Let's hope the vermouth and the ice and the vodka cut it a little bit. The flavor's good. And it's not like I'm saying it's insanely spicy, but it's got some heat. That is a lot of liquid. We're gonna put six ice cubes in here. martini glass. And I guess now I do need to try to pan this down. I should have done it sooner. There we go. Excuse the trash. I got to take that out a minute. <laughs> oh, I like me. All right. See if I made too much. Ooh, that's got a beautiful color. It has an insane color. But you know what? Oh no. That is a lot of jalapeno martini. I sure hope I like this. 
I mean, that's really pretty, actually. <sighs> I wish I had some garnish for it. I do not. I'm gonna show it to you and then I gotta set it down and readjust the camera. I just wanna make sure you get a nice little close up of that. It's got a gorgeous color to it. I kinda really do need a photo real quick, despite. Then we can make a quick bit of garnish. Let's see what we can do. Don't need anything crazy. So. Ah, that's a beauty. That's a beaut. Put that down in there. I don't know if this is gonna work that well, but we're gonna try it. Actually, that works quite well. And now I have to figure out how to get a good shot of it right quick. Alright, let me get a photo and then we'll uh, adjust the camera and we'll take a test. I know it's better when you guys here, but I just got to this way too late. Camera. Obviously not my fancy thing. That's a horrible angle, but well, it's too much headroom is what I'm saying. Horrible composition. Let's see what we think. Mm. 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 Holy shit, that is fucking magic. <laughs> There's still a nice kick of spice and tingle on the back end, a little in the throat, but it doesn't feel chemically, like chemical. It's definitely gonna warm you up as you drink this cold drink, but the vodka and the vermouth really do cut into it just enough where it's not super potent. Like Mary wouldn't like this, it's too spicy, but oh, that. That may be a new go-to. Holy shit. Pickled jalapeno teeny. I don't know what else we call it. Maybe there's a real name for it, but a pickle pino teeny. A pino teeny. A pino teeny. If, if somebody hasn't come up with that, that's mine. I claim it. Claimed, claimed mine. Pino teeny. Pickle pino teeny. That's really good. Hold on, let me, let me, let me make sure I'm not just insane. Up front, it's like this holy blend of dill pickle juice and olive juice. Like almost sweet and tart and vinegary. And as that dissipates and breaks away, you're like coated in a slight tongue tingle that spreads through the mouth. But it doesn't kill you. And then you just kind of feel this little bit of warmth come over you. Fuck. All right, so you want a single. Again, again, it may be different with different things, but I'm using the Mount Olive, no sponsorship or anything. I'd be cool with it, I guess, but I want to experiment with others. Mount Olive, delicatessen style jalapeno slices, Tito's Vodka, Martini and Rossi, extra dry vermouth. For a single, two ounces vodka, half ounce vermouth, two ounces jalapeno. I doubled on that, and I'm very happy about it. Alright, let me try to finish this vlog and get to editing. <laughs> okay, so real quick, the distraction between the Resident Evil review was a possum got in the garage. A little while back, I went out late one night, had to go get something from the garage, open the door, and there's this little cute possum face staring right at me from between the stairs, terrified. I'm like, oh, old me would have freaked out. Like, oh, run away, run away. Uh, new me was like, oh. Oh shit, hey, hey little guy, you must have snuck in. Uh, here, let me go put the garage door and I'll leave you alone for a couple hours. <clears throat> that seemed to work. Now Mary, understandably, seemed to have the impression, understandably, that I was gonna freak out. Cause again, old me would've, and I guess she hadn't gotten used to this, the, the positive change she has influenced in me. Um, so she was a little worried. So she felt like she had to get it out of the garage. And especially, she's, she's having a really exhausted day. I felt terrible today, ran so late. Um, but she's out there trying to shoe it and like shoving a stick, like a broom handle at it. Like, 
sweetie, let, if you don't mind, let, how about let's try the other tack, and, which she probably would have done if she hadn't thought, thought I would have a problem. I was like, here, so she laid out a trail of breadcrumbs out the garage, which could have been its own problem, but apparently wasn't. I said, just leave the door open, let him, you know, give him a minute, assuming it's a him, and she called it a him. Uh, assuming they needed a minute, you know, just let, they'll find their way out. You're probably freaking them out and scaring them. So like, just, just, and I talked calmly. I'm like, hey, little, little, little fella, little creature guy, lady thing, whatever you are. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, don't worry, don't worry. Sorry, we're freaked out. You're cool. We're gonna go away a little while. You find your way out of here. This is our spot. You go find your spot. So apparently it left. I'll find out later when I gotta finish the trash. But um, this pickle teeny is delicious. And that's a fun story. <laughs> Quick other story. I am starting to clean up guitars and restring them. We tried these Ernie Ball rock and roll strings. These are an eight gauge. Uh, I also cleaned up my Gibson Studio Les Paul and like actually polished the neck and put my super slinkies on it. And oh my God, it's a beast. I have way too many guitars. I love guitars. I've been collecting guitars. I've wanted to collect them all my life, but I have collected them last 10 years. I'm getting into experimenting with different strings. I'm wanting to take better care of them, keep them more updated and up kept so i'm learning like when i got that new guitar we showed you last week uh you know floyd rose floyd rose tremolos way different stringing this is actually probably the second real real guitar like my first was a fender strat i still have it i'll show it to you someday but in 2012 when i started to make that new record i think this was or maybe even like 2011 before i made it uh this was the second like electric i ever real electric I ever got for myself this is my latest bass it's like my fourth electric bass I do love it. Uh, we're gonna restring it. We got like a Roto, Roto something string somebody recommended. We got a pack of that coming. Of course, we got some Ernie Balls, and some other things to play. I wanna play with some Fender strings. You know, I'm just trying to learn my strings, learn what I need to do, how to make each guitar sound and feel better because we're getting hard back into the music and I'm very, very excited about it. And we will make a video detailing all of my guitars when I get them all kind of cleaned up. But, um, so that's the, I even polished necks, you know, like all kinds of stuff. That's a guitar update. Video game update! Whoops. No, I'm just, I'm just not gonna leave it there. Um, really haven't played anything. Clicked on a bunch of stuff for my uh, streaks on rewards points. Ended up, I saved some of my streaks on rewards points post Jamboree. I did not take the Xbox with me. In hindsight, maybe I should have. I never would have had time to actually play it or enjoy it in hindsight, but that hotel, one of the beautiful things, one of my favorite things is when you go to a hotel that has an HDMI, HDMI input and a remote that lets you switch to it. Two important things. Um, but I did, like I came back, I remember to get my weekly streak or something like that, but then I totally fucked my daily streak or something, but whatever, getting over it. I got a hundred dollar Enough points for $100. I have the 90, I have over 91,000 points. At 91,000 points, you can get a $100 Xbox gift card. I got that in about three months. I already, once I spend that or exchange it for a gift card, we'll already have 10,000 plus points left in a few days. Now, granted, certain specials I've taken advantage of, things like that. Excuse me, pickle teeny, man. Um, but I was gonna do a controller with it. But now I see that Multiverse game is out. And the thing is, Apparently, it will be free. It's not out for free yet. It's not out on the cheap editions. It looks like $40 and all the way up to $100 are editions you can buy, uh, which basically give you various level of character unlocks and other things like that, and early access. I think that's why the paid editions might be out now. And I'm like, I don't know if I wanna create another controller. Hell, that last controller I got right now, I haven't even, I never synced anything. I haven't used it. Uh, I don't, I'm not inspired to make another one right now. So I'm like, should I just turn that in and just get that $100 game? Or should I spend $100 and use my joy of... <sighs> some, some people, some situations, sometimes it's gonna be a very easy call. The situation, my experience where I'm at in this is, I could probably just spend the $100 to get the game. But I am getting more frugal, especially with the wedding coming up. And, you know, I'm back into music and guitars and even just fucking strings. Like, I'm trying to pile up all kinds of crazy strings and, and shit and cases now. Um, so there are places my money's better spent, like I said, even with the wedding. You know, every nine, ten guests that don't show up, technically that's a new guitar. I'm not saying I'm doing that, I'm just saying it's a way to think about it, you know? A, um, but... 
then I'm like, yeah, but if I'm not really feeling the controller, why even stress about should I or shouldn't I? Just go fucking get it. Especially if Mary and I play that for our August right on Thursday. Because, I mean, come on, we want to be Shaggy. We want to be Tom and Jerry. We want to be Batman. We want to be all the crazy fucking characters that are going to be in that in that game. And I would love to support a game like that to just get even crazier with its character work, you know? Like, I like when you can unite all kinds of crazy IPs in a game. Like, I can have this crazy... Sh like, what if we got Ash Williams from Evil Dead versus Ultra Instinct Shaggy? You know, I'm not saying that's... Because I don't think Ash is even a Warner Brothers thing, but... Come on, you know? <sighs> I haven't gotten back too much on PlayStation. I really need to. I went to a Best Buy the other day. Uh, normal time, random, Tuesday. You know, a uh, busy day, Tuesday. Uh, and they had PlayStation 5s. I would say on the shelves, but not on the shelves, because they don't keep shit on the shelves. On the shelves behind the checkout counters. But they had them in stock, ready to buy, no bundles. They were the Horizon bundles, so they might be like a PlayStation bundle, but not like GameStop bundles. So I was like, oh man, that's like the second or third time I found PS5s in the wild now. Theoretically, don't need it at all, but could still, you know, for like uber, like uber fucking convenience. Like we don't, the level of convenience we don't necessarily need, but could use one more for the living room. You know, same with the Xbox, we could use one more for the basement, maybe a travel S. But I mean, we're talking like fucking privileged, beyond privileged, like convenience at that point. So, you know, but uh, take that with a grain of salt. But it's just cool to fucking see them live in the wild. But yeah, the multiverse game I'm excited about, because other than that, I don't think I'm excited about much until something in August. The Saints Row in August? The Saints Row remake, remaster, whatever? Like, I'm excited for that. And I know there's some other stuff coming this year I'm very excited for. I just can't think of the titles right now. There's a horror game coming up in December that's going to be amazing. Uh, God of War, Ragnarok in November. <sighs> Fuck yeah. I, I, I'm a, I, I... It saved my wallet, but I'm a little ashamed I slept on the collector's editions because, goddamn, God of War, technically God of War 4 or whatever, was so fucking good. And that Payer McCrary score. And I'm excited to replay, or to play for the first time all the original God of War games, which are on the PlayStation Plus. Plus, plus, plus. Whatever the fuck their service is called now. But, uh, all right, you know what? That's my game talk. We got to wrap this shit up. Random other fun story from the Jamboree before you do the wrap up. Uh, during the Hogzillas and the Rips, I actually got one of Jonah Ray had a few shirts. Before they ran out of shirts in VHSs, I did get the shirt. Um, so that was really cool. And also, uh, I have posted a little while ago about uh, the, the John Brennan and the big meat hot dog. And wow, the response has been wonderful. John's having a blast with it. Uh, Darcy retweeted a bit. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Kevin Kevin was excited, the cinematographer of the show, and, you know, Justin, a bunch of people. And then, of course, all my mutant fan people, you know, like Kurt and everybody and uh, Lee and all that, and Chad, you know, a lot of, a lot of just awesome. I love my mutant family. But anyways, <clears throat> so I'm really excited that's going over. And I definitely, I'll just tell you now, I am working. I have ideas for other cast members. We are developing things in the Eric Butts Test Kitchen. Girl. <clears throat> but I should get out of here because I have to fucking finish. I have to edit this vlog, get it uploaded tonight. Hopefully scheduled. I doubt that. Got to edit those five trailers, get them uploaded, scheduled. At least I've done all the text work for that. Just a copy and paste job at this point. Same with this Thursday video. We got that uploaded. I got to do the text for that because that comes out tomorrow. Patreon's already covered. And then I'm good till next Thursday, which normally I usually, on these Wednesdays, I try to cover myself past Thursday to where Friday is the next thing. The vlog's the next thing I got to worry about almost a week later. But with the uh, Ninja Turtle things, with the pizzas and the toy unboxings, it's uh, it's a little bit more more this month. I thought we we were we got to that game so early. I was like, oh, we haven't done so early. We'll get so far ahead. And now here I am, scrambling behind the lines because I haven't quite finished the last pizza, and we got one more unboxing to do. And then I'm like, mm, so far we've been able to unbox a character from each video levels we played in each video. Fuck, I need to actually order one if I want to keep that trend going for the next round. I was like, mm, who could do that? But I kind of want to do that, but you know. Uh, but anyways, I think that's pretty much the wrap up. Uh, next week, uh, theoretically, unless something changes, we should be actually making one more Ninja Turtle pizza. Or, yeah, one more Ninja Turtle pizza. I have one more pizza I'm going to make for the games, but I want to make you one here because I want to, I guess, ooh. Yes, I, you know, time may fuck me up, but I'm going to try my damnedest. The plan is to do a from scratch crust. 
and then whatever kind of crazy pizza. Will we do the shakshuka pizza? Will we find something else? Will we do it from scratch crust and just make something uh, traditional and beautiful? I don't know. Lots of cool trailers coming up. Halloween Kills Saturday, in case you're waiting for it. Uh, and some other stuff. I had a good time shooting these trailers. Is that everything? Can I shut up? Okay, I can shut up. All right, so thank you, everybody. Let me know. Geek out with me in the comments. What did you think? What did you dig? Do you want to see more stuff? You got suggestions. You got cooking suggestions. August, we'll get to turn them into toasties. A lot more hot dogs coming. I know maybe that's not everybody's jam, but there's a reason for that. But also, I use the term hot dogs loosely. Plus, I have a lot of other cooking things. And I don't even feel like maybe I should cook every time. If I don't need to cook, because I lost a good chunk of weight and I need to be losing weight for the wedding. I'm not gonna think about it. It stresses me out right now. There's no, I can do nothing about it at this very moment, so I'm not gonna think about it. All right, comment below, let me know. You can also click that thumbs up button, give me that good old thumb of encouragement as I do love to be encouraged. And remember that we will get through this. We will get through this together. Check out my music for sure, because I'm fucking starting to kick some ass again. Look up Eric Butts anywhere you listen to music. Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, front page of my YouTube. Uh, it's like 90s style pop punk, Green Day, Teenage Bottle Rocket. I keep forgetting to like say, because that's a really good reference for me. Uh, uh, Bouncing Souls, The Offspring, things like that. Screeching Weasel. If you like them, you might like me, you might not. I just appreciate it if you give a couple of songs a try, see what you think not for you i appreciate your time if i am sweet more stuff coming and i'm starting to play in other genres film stuff coming next year too so if you want to check out other music and filmmaking of my past on my out-of-date website it is ericbutts.com check that out have fun with that see what you think it'll get better eventually and of course we have more content and ways to support the channel with the links in the description below so click that see more button to see more butts baby all right i gotta get out of here because it's it's 1 14 a.m and i probably at least have two maybe three hours of editing and scheduling ahead of me. I thought because I got so far ahead this morning, I'd be fine. I thought I'd be done by now. Nope. But thank God I got all that done because could you imagine how fucked that would be if I hadn't done any of that yet? Especially because we're going to go see Nope tomorrow. So we'll have that review for y'all next week and hopefully more reviews. All right, I got to go. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. I'll see y'all later, okay? Bye. Joe Bob Briggs. Joe Bob Briggs. Gerald, Gerald, Hogzilla, Hogs. <laughs> <laughs>